If you're looking to update the trim in your home, then this video is for you. Hey y'all, my name is Kanisha and in this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to update the trim around your doors and also update your baseboards. Keep watching because it's time to start keeping up with KJ. So here is the current trim that I have on my door and honestly, there's nothing wrong with the trim, but because I want a more modern look for my baseboards with just the um, flat square look, that means that I also have to go in and update the trim around the doors or the aesthetic wouldn't match. When it comes to removing the trim from around your doors or your baseboards, all you're gonna need is some gloves, a box cutter to score the caulk, a trim puller, and then some sort of mallet or hammer. When it comes to removing trim, the first step in that process is you want to make sure you use your box cutter to go in and score the caulk. So what that means is that you are taking that box cutter and running it along the space between the side of the trim and the wall to make sure when you go and remove that, you're not pulling off too much of the wall or causing any extra damage. When you're actually removing the trim, you want to make sure that you are using the right tool. I am using the Cobalt Trim Puller and I will link all of the supplies that I use for this project down in the description below. Now that the door casing is off, the next step is going around and making sure that I get as much of this caulk off so that way I have a flat surface to work on. Okay, um, an important thing to do when you are upgrading your trim is try to your best to get a trim that's gonna be wider than the one that you took off because that just means that you're gonna to have to do a lot less prep work before putting on your new trim. So my trim that I took off was about two and a half inches. The trim that I'm replacing it with is three and a quarter. So that means that I don't have to, which I didn't have a lot of like rip out um, as far as like paint coming off once I took the casing off. But I am gonna just make sure again, I'm taking that caulk off so that way my trim is flat as it can be or as flat as possible against the wall. So I just marked what's called the door reveal. Okay, so I use this Craig multi-measure jig to give me three sixteenths. Okay, so your reveal on the door can be anywhere from one eighth to a quarter of an inch. And so this Craig jig, what it allows you to do is it allows you to simply use the edging around. So this space around this tool is already preset to 316. So that way you're able to just hit the tool on there and then create your reveal. So what I did was I created a corner right here. Okay, and then I showed my reveal all the way in different segments down there. So what this will allow me to do is make sure that when I go to put my door casing on, that my door casing is in a straight line.
So here's what the lines for my door reveal looks like. So make sure when you are installing your door casing that you align your door casing right up along these lines and you should be perfectly fine and making sure that your measurements are exactly where they need to be and also straight. When it comes to determining your actual measurements for your door casing pieces, for me, it was easier to go ahead and cut a straight line on one edge of the trim piece, just because sometimes when you buy these pieces, they are not completely straight on the ends and then use the piece itself, line it up on the floor and then along my door reveal to go ahead and use that for my measurement instead of actually measuring. Um, this just seemed to be easier to me. Okay, so on every board, I put the board flat on the floor and then I line it up with my 316th reveal, the square that that created, and then I draw a line. I draw this straight line and then I draw an angle line to let me know in which direction I'm doing my 45 degree miter. To install the trim, I used a Cobalt 18 volt brad nailer with two inch long nails. Once the two vertical pieces of the door trim were installed, I then took the top piece and then cut a 45 degree miter on the left side and then put it into place and use my reveal and then also the door casing trim piece on the right side to determine how far or how long this piece needed to be and then made another 45 degree miter cut. When we start talking about getting your top piece connected to your two side pieces with your miters, you want to make sure you have some sort of adhesive on your miter edges. I'm using the Prime MDF trim, so I am going to go in with some Gorilla Glue to then put this on the miters, and then I'm going to then brad nail this board into place. Alrighty y'all, so all of the door casing inside of the room has been done, so I needed to do that first before I did the baseboards because the new casing is wider than the old casing, so the measurements would have been off if I would have done the baseboards first, okay? So if you are changing out your door casing and your baseboards at the same time, you need to reinstall your door casings before you can do your baseboard trim. So in a perfect world, the corners of the walls in your home would be 90 degree angles and you would miter your corners at 45 degree angles, okay? And here's why you don't want to do that, okay? Because of the um, joint compound and mud that holds 
the tape and the walls together to cover up the seams, most likely this angle is not 90 degrees, okay? So before you start cutting your baseboards, what you wanna do is you wanna cut out two um, tester pieces, okay? So a general rule of thumb for inner corners, okay, you wanna do 44 degree miters, and then for outer angles, or our corners on the wall, you want to do 46 degree miters, okay? So these two pieces are cut at 44 degree miters, okay? And then I have already gone through and made sure that these are going to fit into this corner. Okay, and I'll bring it closer so you can actually see. Okay, so here is a close-up view. Again, I cut these mitered angles at 44 degrees instead of 45 degrees, okay? Because again, this is not going to be a perfect 90 degree angle. So my recommendation to you is going to be to cut two scrap pieces and then go around and check all of the corners in your rooms before you start making your actual measurements. Okay, so when you're installing your baseboards, it's really important that you find the studs in the wall so that way you can nail your baseboards directly into the studs. With this Craig Magnetic Stud Finder, this makes this project super easy because I can literally just move the laser around until I find the stud. So because it's magnetic, the magnets on the back stick to the nails and the screws that hold these studs into place. So now I know that I have a stud located right here and then the laser allows me to put a mark where my baseboards will cover that up so I know exactly where my studs are. I actually found that it was easier to just go ahead and move the stud finder from place to place finding the studs instead of actually marking it because it stays on the wall this part of the project could be hands free while I went ahead and brad nailed the baseboard directly into the stud. Okay, so that piece aligns down in this corner. Okay, and this was my initial plan was to use my longest piece of board and then make the miter cut and then just do this piece right here for this section right here. Okay, the reason why I cannot do that is because when you're gonna join um, two ends of a baseboard or any kind of trim together, it needs to occur over a stud, okay? So with that being said, I have a stud right here. I have a stud there and then I have a stud there, okay? I've already marked that with my stud finder. So I'm gonna use this right here as my reference point. So basically what I'm going to, I'm gonna make sure this is flat, okay? I'm going to mark out probably about an inch and a, well, probably about an inch um, for the width of my stud just to be safe. And then I'm gonna make a 45 degree miter cut here Okay, and then I have another piece that I will measure from here and then have my next piece go from there to the wall so that way both pieces are secured into the stud. Okay. So after a few adjustments, I finally got this down to the right size. So I'm going to install the longest piece and then I'm gonna add some adhesive in this miter and then install this piece right here.
All right, y'all, so at this point, all of the trim work inside the guest room has been installed, okay? Um, I did a lot of work last night just because I was trying to get things done. I mean, it was getting too dark in here for me to film, um, but I did leave a few things for me to show you all. So once you install your trim, then you need to go in and you need to caulk and fill your holes, and I'm gonna show you how I did that. Here's what things look like once they have been caulked. I've done all of this here. And then you can see the difference on this one right here. And I'm gonna caulk and show you some of the tips and things that I've kind of learned while I have been working on DIY projects. So y'all, I used to hate caulking, but here are some of the things that I've learned along the way. You wanna make sure that you have an angled cut at the tip of your caulk. And then I make sure my finger is damp and then I use it as a guide to kind of follow behind the caulk to smooth everything out. So that way I'm not having to go in and wipe everything down with any baby wipes. If I do make a mistake or there's too much caulk in one spot, I'll kind of use a damp towel, wipe it along like you'll see me doing here. But really, there is that's really it. Um, so dragging that finger along definitely makes the caulk so much more smoother. Okay, so this by no means is sponsored, but Mohawk, if you're watching me, you want to sponsor, let's do it. Um, but I really do love this product, so I'm glad I found this before I started doing this because this cuts down on time, okay? So this Mohawk Feel Stick is basically a wax crown that allows you to just go and rub across those nail holes, fill them, and then go through with a credit card to get that excess wax off so that way you're not having to go through and sand every single nail hole. Okay, I'll have a link for one down in the description. We are getting so close to the end of this project. The next step is just gonna be going through and sanding down those miters to make sure they are as smooth as possible before going in and painting and caulking. Here's a tip when it comes to painting baseboards. You wanna make sure that you have a roller that on the opposite end from where the roller goes in, there is nothing there. And then get a piece of folder or some sort of card stock and you can literally take that and then continuously roll across the floor. And then that is blocking the floor from getting any paint on it. And again, you're not having to tape off when you're doing baseboards. Y'all, the trim in the guest bedroom is finally complete and it looks amazing, but I cannot believe how long this actually took, but I'm in love with the results, so it is what it is. I've learned a lot throughout this process and I hope you have too, and I just really still cannot believe that the next time I show you all the guest bedroom, there will finally be furniture in here. This space has completely transformed and looks totally different from when I first started this project. I've learned a lot throughout this transformation. I hope you did too. So be sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe so that way you can start keeping up with KJ.